I guess someone else might be able to make it somewhere else, but uh, certainly I am not, I guess. Um, yeah, this landscape, I mean, I'm from Berlin originally, the former eastern part of Berlin. Like, it used to be uh, the capital of the GDR when I was born. Um, and uh, like this whole area, this Brandenburg area north of Berlin, this is where my grandfather used to live and where I spent many weekends uh, of my childhood. And it's an area that always sort of filled me uh, with a lot of fear, <laughs> actually. Um, just something about the way those houses are arranged and that there's... there's also, it's funny, there are no churches around there, so most of these most, most of these villages are just basically existing around a sort of hollow core, so to speak. Um, and there was always the woods, like, very deep and very dark and very evocative. Um, also, my grandfather used to be a very sort of loud person, very sort of, I, I was kind of a bit like that, that guy, the boss, his boss actually in the film. Yeah. So um, yeah, that all sort of is the, how you say, is like the, the ground on which all these sort of ideas grow that I get. It just seems to always be there, don't know why. So the, the place, would you say the place inspired the story or did you have this idea that you placed in... It's, it's like places like this, um, when I was, I was traveling home by train from the Baltic Sea to Berlin and uh, traveling through these and was at dusk, traveling through a lot of little villages like that in the forest and how they looked like huddled together and all the shutters were down as if sort of trying to force themselves uh, to, you know, to, to, how do you say, to to protect themselves, to make themselves strong against some sort of threat that might be out there. And I just always wanted, okay, what would be the threat to that sort of little, little narrow-minded maybe village? And then, then I figured this, this character just walking through the streets, you know, these empty streets with a sword and a dress. And uh, so it basically started with that, and then it was about figuring out why is he there, who is he looking for, um, uh, or who has been looking for him, maybe. Um, yeah, and so basically just uh, generated from that. Any questions? Please. Yeah, sorry, please. Did, did you think about Little Red Riding Hood when you were the story? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, what was the question? Uh, sorry, ah. the, yeah, the question is about what have you thought about Little Red Riding Hood when and she... And the grandmother and all that. Yeah, yeah, sure, there's the grandmother and also the... Uh, something because sometimes there are questions about the cross-dressing aspect of the film and stuff. Um, in, interestingly, also the wolf is sort of a cross-dresser in the fairy tale as well, uh, as he sort of he puts on the gown of the of the grandmother to to uh, to lure Red Riding Hood into a feeling of safety and stuff like that. Yeah, so I guess there are traces of these motifs very deliberately in there. I don't think it's a it's not an, exactly an interpretation of Red Riding Hood, but still, I, very deliberately, I sort of. Uh, took a lot from this sort of uh, soil of like German folklore, fairy tales, yeah, the imagery. Was there another? Yes, please. Uh, first, I just want to say I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so great. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Also, I don't speak German. Maybe. Oh. Uh, I don't speak. Sorry. Uh, I don't speak German, but if I'm not mistaken, was part of it crowdfunded in the credits? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, I was just curious to know what that. What part that played in your making the movie? Uh, it, I would have wished it wouldn't have played a part actually, um, because the crowdfunding though fun was not uh, intended from the get go. Because originally this was supposed to be something made for television, so it's actually my graduation film, and there's a there's a like television commissioning board uh, who take care of like young filmmakers, and so they, having seen some short films I've made before, approached us because they wanted to do a series of self-contained thrillers, and they figured, well, it can be a bit weird, you know, just, just have fun with it, and we did it. <laughs> so we generated this, um, but it did never pass the board, because they deemed it like, no, sorry, this is like far beyond the taste, uh, like, guidelines framework of public television. Um, so they, I guess they were afraid that they had to answer to people, what, this is my tax money. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, so we didn't get that, uh, and but we were so in love with the film by then, and we had already put so much effort in it that we wanted to make it anyway. So we um, we applied for film funding, but you can't apply actually for film funding in Germany unless you have a TV station involved. So 
they were really nice to us because we were a student graduation project. So they said, okay, listen, if you somehow get the money that, or, that usually a TV station would put into that, so that we can trust you, to give us a feeling that we can trust you, then, then okay, we will give you the other half, basically. So we had to come up with that uh, rest of the money very briefly before shooting, actually. <laughs> like uh, three months, two months, something like that. And so we did a campaign and uh, it was fun, but it was very uh, stressful because it was so close to shooting, you know, during pre-production. Um, and we didn't reach our goal, actually. We, we got something like $14,000, which was really nice still, <laughs> you know. And also it uh, convinced the commissioning board, uh, the, the, like the film board, uh, to actually give us the rest of the money anyway even if it wasn't as much as they would have hoped. Yeah. That was a bit long, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? At the back, please. I was wondering if you could talk a bit about the process of getting that shot at the very end, where the wolf's head comes off and the camera spins. Yeah. What was that like? What, what did you, how did you conceive it and how did you actually shoot it? Um, yeah, well, at first I conceived the sort of the, the imagery of like, being sort of in, I don't even know if that sort of, uh, if, it, if it really uh, represents that, but as if being like in the in the perspective of the head that, that sort of tumbles back and we see like, and we see not blood or something because I never wanted it to be a, like a gruesome moment, but rather some sort of final pinnacle of liberation or whatever. And, uh, and so I wanted all this stuff just, you know, come out there and uh, be free. And uh, so we had a very good special effects coordinator who never in his life has done this, uh, because he's actually a young filmmaker, uh, a director from Germany as well. Uh, but he's very fond of special effects. So we asked him if he, because we had no money, to actually involve an actual special effects person. And he did all the special effects in the film, and he did an, an amazing job. And uh, so, yeah, we thought about how will we do this. I mean, there's a certain rig, a camera rig, which is, uh, it, there's a guy in Berlin who owns this, which where you can you can put the camera in there and it can sort of spin uh, within it. And we shot it in uh, like well, ultra slow motion so that we would get a lot of it. And then uh, we had this torso um, that was made by our special makeup effects. And in that torso was this sort of uh, homemade mesh <laughs> sort of stuff pipes and stuff that our special effects coordinator built. And then through that there would come this mix of steam and blood. And, uh, and and also sparks. And the huge fireball that happens actually in a shot is a mistake. It shouldn't have been there. Uh, but uh, unfortunately the, the smoke was kind of hot when it came out and the sparks, they had this reaction with the smoke. Uh, so we were very happy that we actually got the fireball, but um, we, um, it wasn't even planned. I don't know, is that an answer to your question? Okay. Yes, please. Can you talk about the relationship between the wolf and the wolf? The wolf and the wolf, yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if you don't answer, I think it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort of because I, I guess you, you're asking, uh, sort of, sort of, sort of, uh, gives me think that you have an idea about it. So I, I sort of, when it comes to that, I don't, I basically don't want to ruin the audience's uh, ideas by giving my ideas, yeah. which might, because I guess they're all in the same direction in a way. I think the question sort of. Uh, Sorry, my English fails me right now. You know what I mean. So if you're fine with me not answering, I'm fine with not answering. Okay, that's fine. Yes, please. I'd like to ask both of you, uh, starting with the actor, about this. I'd like to ask both of you, starting with the actor, about the sexual tension uh, in the film. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. What, what do you want me to know? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I I, um, I think uh, first of all, uh, what we what we worked on uh, wasn't particular the, the sexual uh, tension, but the tension of uh, of the the kind of uh, um, dark uh, uh, what, like how can I say the wild the wild the what wilderness yeah. to say yeah the wilderness uh, that that you know. The wolf, so to speak, that has nothing to do in in your society. You know, it's not wanted there, and you know. Uh, but Jacob obviously, you know, is is attracted by it, and I think that's that's uh, that's also uh, that's a, that's a major part of of, of the attention, and and 
I don't know, I, th I think the, um, the sexual tension becomes, um, yeah, well, it comes just like that, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's so hard for yeah, me. But the, I, I, I can, I can, it's almost like a, like a 50s movie in that regard, in that, uh, that, that the sexual tension would always be replaced by something else, you would always have some sort of symbolism uh, like, exactly. it, that, that, would, that would take the place of the sexual tension. And since this is about a character who I think has a lot of issues with things that he represses and that he won't acknowledge to himself, I found it kind of uh, fitting, basically, to have that. And I mean, in the end, it sort of you know drops the pants and says hello, and it's kind of obvious <laughs> what, what this has been about maybe all the time. But uh, in terms of acting, I guess it's not that we yeah. ever talked about the sexual tension in the actual scene that we were working on, really, uh, because it would, I think uh, the sexual tension, uh, uh, you know, the story tells the the sexual tension in a way that um, Jacob always follows his. Uh, because it's interesting, but yeah, you know, it's, sorry, sorry for <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. Um, uh, no, but for example, for me, the, the most beautiful scene in a way is the dance, and when he sort of uh, lures him in and catches him, and it's a very tender thing actually. But in Jacob's mind, it is still some sort of strategy that he actually follows, you know, in order to stop him. So, so that's that's the fun thing about it, I think. So. Uh, Huge levels of denial basically going on there, and so and even and also when directing it, I guess so. It basically becomes more about directing, like the surface level of what what Jacob thinks he is doing and stuff like that, and have the other thing sort of hopefully evolve through the context, if you know what I mean. I mean both actors are straight. Um, unfortunately, no, I won't say that. It's just uh, that's just how it is. So. Uh, <laughs> I guess I have to use these tricks to actually get them to. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, should have said that. Um, any other questions? Love you. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, I, I missed the the right writing there, but um, what? Uh, what about werewolves in India? Can you speak to that? Um, From in both the the wolf and the, the policeman. Yeah, sure. I mean, sure, you could. Um, it's um, the werewolf, where you have this, like, or Jekyll and Hyde, or whatever, where you have uh, this sort of repressed side that is very aggressive and very destructive and, and uh, always is hidden, but sometimes you just can't help it and it goes out and goes wild. It's, it's, I mean, it's a huge theme all over the film, I think. I mean, I wouldn't go so far as to. It's interesting how much the film actually would suggest, that this goes back to your question, maybe. That actually, maybe, for example, uh, the wolf and and the samurai are basically the same. Or I, I kind of like the the implication, but I never wanted it to sort of feel like this was the solution or something. You know, I feel it's more like um, in a way like one of my favorite films, The Company of Wolves. You know, you know it by Neil Jordan, mm -hmm. and it always it also uh, like works with all these werewolf myths, but not in a sort of literal way, but very poetically. And so I sort of, but still, it's infused by that. You, I, I, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah. All right. We unfortunately have time for one more question only. So if anyone has a last one, yes, please. Um, to me, it's quite obvious that this is about repression. Yeah. And it isn't about what sexuality is repressed, but that he is repressed of yeah. of any of his sexual or primal urges. And Even this like like aggressive size or rage against yeah. something that he feels. And that he is facing himself and everything he fears and everything he he tries to keep clamped down. And may I mention Ingmar Bergman because I think Ingmar Bergman certainly time and time again in his films, he's actually looking at himself and he's dealing with Aspects of himself. Yeah, I film. I will admit to that. Yeah. Sure. It's it's that's that's. Are you that's, No, not at all. No. <laughs> Why would I? Um, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It wasn't so much a question, but I uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, well, I just wanted to say it. Yeah. It is, it's obvious. Could you have one quick question? Yeah. yeah sure. Mm -hmm. Who, sorry, who? Oh, yeah. um, thank you. 
Uh, I wanted to know where you got the idea for that pop song at the end. Huh. Well, it's, it's one of my favorite songs, actually. Um, it's by a Swedish band called The Ark, and they are like a, a, a modern day, like in the early 2000s, glam, cheesy pop rock band, and they always... Uh, they, 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 they perform wearing this like tight spandex, stuff like that, but it's in a, a really strange way, it's unironic, you know what I mean? Because you, it's, it's easy to laugh at that, you know, oh, they're so funny, you know, they're... but to them it's actually an act of sort of liberation to have these cheesy tunes and to just uh, go wild with them and with the audience as well. These concerts were amazing. Uh, that I went with. And, and so in a way, it sort of summed up my feelings about how one should feel at the end of all this sort of because it gets kind of nightmarish, but at the end, I wanted people to sort of just have this release, and uh, and I couldn't imagine a better song. And it's and I have to. I'm very grateful to my producers who cannot be here, who were here for the first screening, but also back in Berlin, that they actually um, not only allowed me because I didn't even dare to say, oh, I would love to use that song, because I figured, okay, we're on such a tight budget, and I mean they're not the biggest group in Sweden, but still, it will cost us something. Um, and then my producer Linus himself, he came to me, well, wouldn't it be cool if we used that song? Because I know you like it so much and it wouldn't be sort of... And that was really nice of him, actually, that I didn't have to say it. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I can say about that. All right. I think that's the first time we have time. Thank you. Thank you.